Hey there YouTube, Arbonus69 here. Now if you've been following me on YouTube and on Twitter as well, you'll see I've been experimenting with uh, flexible filament on my CTC 3D printer. And I've had some success and some failures. I've had very good results with flexible uh, PLA from Rigid Ink. However, I tried flexible uh, TPU from Rigid Ink and got a little bit cocky with it. I decided to start the print off and then just leave it running and leave my printer alone. Unfortunately, I came back to a bit of a mess on the printer. Nothing stuck, I was printing too fast. It was my own fault, uh, nothing to do with the actual filament itself. It's just the settings I haven't got dialed in yet. I just got a bit too ahead of myself. So I thought I'd do a quick video for you to show you how I change print heads on my CTC 3D printer and how I align both the left and the right print head to make sure that they are both the same level for printing with two print heads on my printer. So let's take a look at the uh, result of my mistake. <laughs> So as you can see here, this is the result of the print failure that I had. As you can see, the um, ceramic block is a complete and absolute mess. It's got burnt on um, captain tape and all sorts stuck to it along with melted filament. We've got the actual throat tube here. You can see that's got melted TPU in the threads as well, as well as... I managed to get most of it out from the inside, but uh, it's probably not the best it could be. And then the, uh, the hot end itself, as you can see, has a fair amount of blue TPU flex filament stuck to it and uh, quite a lot stuck on the inside and all this you can see here the burnt TPU this was pushed up around this ceramic block so the whole thing was completely unsalvageable I did try and clean it up but unfortunately I couldn't get anything done with it so a trip to eBay later and we have a brand new set so we have two ceramic blocks, two new print heads, two throats and two um, pads to keep the heat thermal insulate etc and stop the heat transference. So if we dive into the bag, there we are. So these are the pads, oops, so these are the pads that are pre-cut pre for the holes, the two new ceramic blocks, oops, there we are. The two new throats and the two new print heads, these are 0.4mm print heads. So the next thing to do is to assemble the print head. We can do this before we go over to the printer. So what I normally do is start by screwing the print head into the actual block at the bottom here. It needs to go that way around for the printer. Now this I don't screw in all the way. Only to about the threads disappear, about there. And we need to get the piece of tape piece of cotton, sorry, pop that over, bend it round, oops, yep, bend it round so that it covers and that hole is visible and then screw this piece in, like so, and then that just bends round and then we tape the whole thing up with captain tape. It's going to be a bit awkward to do, so I'll probably do this off camera. So there we are. That's the part all caps and taped up. As you can see, we've got it all covered. We've got the throat in, the nozzle in, and we've got the hole left here for the grub screw to tighten up. So everything is done. Now what we need to do is install this in the printer and get it aligned with the other print head. So let's hop on over and have a look. So here we can see the printer head is completely disassembled. I've taken the fans and the heatsink off so we can get down to the nitty gritty of it and make it a little bit easier to do the installation. So with our newly prepared print head, we need to make sure we've got the hole for the heater cartridge and the grub screw here for the um, thermal reader facing us. We insert it in. We get the heater cartridge lined up underneath and thread it in. There it is. Now before we tighten it all up, we need to make sure we get the grub screw for the thermal reader and get this connected on. Now this is a little bit tricky for me. Um, the wires are not quite long enough and I haven't quite stretched them far enough on the actual printer, but hey ho, we will make do with what we've got. So what I tend to do is twist it around a bit to get this on, get it started so there. Until we get it started, I just square up the printer head as best I can. Pop this cable up a bit. A bit more room, there we are. And tighten that down. It's 
So we get this nice and tight. There we go. The next thing to do is get a very small Allen gate and tighten the grub screw underneath here for the heater cartridge. So make sure the heater cartridge is all the way in. And then just tighten this grub screw underneath. There we go. Now, what I do have to help align is this little part of Thingiverse. Now I've cut the centre bridge out because I don't have space between these two print heads to allow this printer, this uh, centre bridge to go into. And all we do is we attach this underneath here, like so. Use the screws that attach it to the printer cartridge and then we allow these to swivel freely and align up to this. So if you give me two seconds, I'll be back momentarily once I've attached this. A few moments later. So there we are, this is now firmly attached. If we lift up so you can see, both print heads now rest on the bottom. Now what I like to do is I like to slacken off the top part here and remove both the left and the right stepper motor. I'll just take them out of the equation. There we go. So I'll take that one out. I'll take that one out. There we are. Now we're just left with this. And now we can access the top of these throats if we need to. To, As you can see, we can move these up and down. Oops, there we go. As you can see, we can move these up and down to position them where we need. This group screw is a little bit too tight. There we go. What I like to do is square it up and just give it a little bit of firm pressure so it's touching the print bed. So it's touching the uh, the bottom of the the print there. And then just tighten it up. And that's one done. Now the second one, I'm gonna do exactly the same. A little bit of pressure. So it's touching the bottom of the print bed, the, um, the base of this, and tighten that grub screw. There we go. And now we, have, we know we have two print heads that are aligned correctly. Now it's time to just to reassemble all this back together and we'll be good to go. So I'll be back in a few minutes once I've done that. A few moments later. So there we are, that is the um, printer head reassembled. Now the last thing to do is just finishing tightening up these screws with even pressure. And then we are good to go. Now if you'll notice I have left this part on while I've been re reassembling. Just to make sure, I mean it shouldn't adjust anything, but this is just a precaution that I do when I do this step. To make sure that I don't juggle these print heads to make sure that they stay set where we had them set originally. And the last one tightened up. There we are, that's all screws in nice and tight. Now the last job to do is just reattach the power for each of the stepper motors. One in there, like so. And the second one in there, like so. Oh yes, there is one more job we need to do, which I almost forgot. And that'll be to retighten these two screws in here. Not too tight, just finger tight. One. And two. There we go. That's everything done. Now we just take this part off and reattach it back to the... Oops. Printer cartridge here, and we're good to go. Level the print bed and start printing. And that's all there is to align your print heads on the CTC 3D printer, and not to mention changing the print head as well. And that's it for the uh, CTC 3D printer and the print head. Do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video, please smack the thumbs up or the thumbs down button, either way, much appreciated. And also, if you can mash that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel, helps out immensely. And until next time, happy printing.